I just want to know where you at with the Tigers, man. Are you believe? Are you starting to believe? I know it's only three games, but does the young talent at least show you signs that they can improve? Here's here's the other side of that. They still have AJ Hinch, That's a guy true. that I'll ride or die for, and he's pulling the strings. And he's pulling the strings, so Sam Flannel. Shouldn't you have more confidence? Because he's pulling the strings? No, absolutely. I've always had confidence in A.J. Hinch. He's a top three manager in this game, man. Top three manager in this game. And Flannel, people can say what they want, but the bottom line is this. I've said this time after time after time. A.J. Hinch is a six, seven, eight win swing having him as a manager. I truly believe that. I do. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned A.J. Hinch because uh, I've got a list of some things that A.J. Hinch himself did that really helped this team and maybe led to some wins. First of all, the three different lineup combinations. I understand that the bats weren't great in games one and three, but still, they're 3-0. and oh. And uh, the bullpen, which uh, as a manager, you play a role in deciding uh, who, to, who to take out, when to take them out, who to put in. The bullpen was pretty damn dominant, and I know we will get to them later, and pretty damn dominant is an understatement. They were pretty much lights out mm -hmm. but uh here's a couple examples one of them is having jason foley as the closer and not alex lang as i said to to begin the well, year hey hold up sam flannel sorry, sorry i'm gonna interrupt Go you for ahead. a Go second ahead. here but since since you since you were on it uh yeah. cats neil with a dumb take aj hinch is nothing without elite talent oh really <laughs> Because what would it, what would any run of the mill manager have done in the closer situation they would have put jason foley in for three three batters yeah <laughs> yep, and I was actually going to uh, get to that. Foley as the closer instead of Alex Lang, first of all, looks like a good move because you can say what we want about Alex Lang and how much how good he looked at times. Yeah. Overall, he had an ERA that was higher than you'd like as a closer. I think it was 358 or 368. He blew six saves, and he had a high walk rate. And as a closer, that's the last thing you want is a high walk rate because uh, you, you, you give up runners, you uh, blow saves. But also, when you look at the uh, first game of the season... It was um, it was Andrew Chafin pitched the eighth, and instead of putting Jason Foley out there to start the ninth, AJ Hinch thought that the lefty Chafin lefty Benintendi matchup was a better matchup to get the first out. And what did Andrew Chafin do? Good morning, good afternoon, good night. You're out, Andrew yep. Benintendi. And then the last two were obviously <laughs> got, by, got by got uh, by Jason Foley. <laughs> no, I'm sorry again. I love that the White Sox are in this position. I yeah. <sighs> I love it. I hate the White Sox. Mm -hmm. I hate the White Sox. With their stick. Like, people come at Detroit all the time. And you know what? Guaranteed rate field or U.S. Cellular, wherever they play, it's a very, very fine baseball stadium. Once you, once the L train pulls up and you step over the used needles and everything like that and the puddles Damn. of piss to fucking get into the stadium, it's a very fine stadium. And people want to come at Detroit all the time? You ever rolled out to Guaranteed Rate Field or wherever it is? You ever do that? Never hear that narrative around there, though, by the way. I love it. I hate the White Sox. Hate them.